This is the Toffee Web Podcast. Close season is winding down. The Olympics are done. Everton's preseason program came to an end on Saturday, and the new Premier League season is just days away. Are we ready for the final ever season at Goodison Park Blues? I don't think we are, but we're about to embark on a campaign of firsts, one which has started already, I suppose, with the last ever home curtain raiser, uh, that 1 1 draw with Roma, and which will end the week after the Grand Old Ladies' final home game against Southampton next May. Strange to think. Hello, Blues. Welcome back once again to the Toffee Web Podcast. Andy is recuperating from his time in Paris with the Beeb, but Paul, Adam, and myself are here to look ahead to the kickoff to the 2024-25 season. Uh, you can probably hear from my voice how I'm doing coming off a bout of COVID, so please excuse my voice, which will hopefully hold up for the duration of the pod, but uh, hopefully you two fellows are doing better than I am. Yeah, I guess I must be if I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I must be a bit better than you, yeah, yeah. Not too bad, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, good. I was at the uh, Court de Roma game on um, on uh, Saturday. I don't normally really tend to bother much of pre-seasons because I just, I, yeah, particularly the early ones can be, um, as you might have found out with Coventry, Adam, it's, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, they can just be a bit of a, a much, yeah, a bit of a nothing, but, yeah, much of a muchness, you know. Uh, but because I'm 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 actually away, so I'm, it feels like quite bad. I'm miss, you know I'm missing the first, the last first home game of the season. You know, which uh, I got to some park, which is uh, a bit a little bit sad now. But I'm going to be away uh, on holiday for that. So I really wanted to have a lot of look at some of the new players against Roma. So it was good to good to catch up on um, good to catch up on some of them. Um, and yeah, not 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 too bad. I think mostly from from what I've seen there. So looking forward to seeing. A few of them throughout the season, but yeah, been been keeping pretty good. How have you been, Adam? Yeah, been okay. As as you mentioned, I I have the misfortune of spending a, a midweek evening in Coventry, um, <laughs> watching. Uh, as you say, at this point in the season, you you do have to separate your effort and brain and go. Okay, this is essentially an exercise, not a game of football. Um, although it was it was quite. Oddly reassuring to hear your first half-time boo of the season um, in <laughs> July, um, but um, but yeah, away from that, yeah, all all okay really. Um, I've spent most of my day talking about mariachi for uh, some work that I'm doing. Um, so uh, yeah, talking about Everton feels uh, well. I, I don't know if there's a connection there really, but um, I'm sure <laughs> we'll a bit of fanfare for that first first game of the season. That's as good a segue as I can do from that. But um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm. I'm oddly calm about the start of the season. I think more so than the last couple, really. So um, yeah, quite quite excited to to get going and encouraged um, after the weekend's showing. Certainly compared to where I was maybe a couple of weeks ago after those early games of preseason. How about you, Lyndon? What have you been making of it all? Yeah, I I, I didn't see much of the Coventry game, but I got the. Uh... You know, you, it's hard for people not to to react, even though it is preseason. Because I think, as we mentioned last time, you want, or at least I think I put it in my article. Actually, you want to see some kind of progress, some kind of idea that that when the big thing kicks off, that everyone's going to be ready. Um, maybe some some evidence of some changes in the style of play. I don't think we've really seen that, but um, and we'll, we'll get onto it in a minute. But I think the some of the stuff from Roma with the new players is is quite encouraging. Uh, I think we've got those. We've got some some good additions to the to the team. But uh, Paul, I was going to ask you: Is this the, when was the last time you missed the the first home game? Oh crikey! Uh, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. Uh, I, I haven't thought about it. I, I really don't know. Uh, so it's so been a while. Then. Quite a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really don't know. It can't be as far back as when it was like. I was out in New Zealand for a little spell. It can't be that far. That was like two thousand and uh two thousand and eight. So it can't it can't be that far. It can't oh, be it that long be, ago. I it, it, yeah. I'll have to check yeah. that. Let me get back to you on that. I'll have to, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. It's not a weekly question, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's your weekly question. Yeah. If you're I struggling, really then we're I'm really going to struggle. Um, yeah, I'll try and mark my brains throughout the pod and I'll hope, hope, to, hope, hope to have an answer by the end of the, uh, this, by the end It's of not the important. Not no, important. No, I was just no. curious. <laughs> <laughs> he, he needs to know. He needs to know. Yeah, it's um, been a while. 
Yeah, it's, it's interesting, uh, Adam, you mentioned feeling calm. I saw a comment actually on uh, on one of the Toffee Web threads where people were saying this is as quiet, I think, as the site has been going into a new season. And I think that's probably reflective of the fact that for me personally, it feels like we've weathered an enormous storm. And I know the takeover stuff is still racking, uh, hovering around the background. and Nothing's really going to be secure until that is sorted out. But it does... It feels like on the pitch, at least, that you know we've weathered a, we've weathered an almighty storm. We've had three really really tough years, and I think a year ago we were we were talking about just wanting a season of stability and a really boring mediocrity. I think we might get that this time, with you know maybe some some optimism and misplaced hope that we might get better than that. But I think we'd all settle for that, wouldn't we? Oh, for sure. Um, I, I'm. I'm a little nervous still. I mean, me, you can't help it, can you? I guess. Um, you know, I, 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 if you're going to talk a little negatively, I, I think that the, the three that have come up, that they've got to be a little bit better than the ones that came up last season. You have to assume that. I know Leicester are probably going to be in a little bit of trouble, aren't they? Um, they can't seem to spend a lot of money, and obviously they could have financial problems. Ipswich too, you think might be tough for them. But I don't know. I just feel like the Maybe a bit more, bit better prepared, and I don't know. They signed a few, a few players. Glad to see. I get the feeling it might be a bit trickier down the bottom, but hopefully we, we've done enough in terms of what we signed, and what hopefully there's a few more, perhaps to still come to the door. I, I think the it would it, it'd be it'd be really it wouldn't it just be amazing if we could get off to a, get off to a bit of a flyer, you know, like um, yeah. by that, like you know, a win at Brighton, you know, I don't know, winning two of the first three or three of the first four or something like that, you know, maybe really, really. Um, Really positive if we could do that. Obviously, um, last season, you just think how long it took to get going. Yeah, you know I mean, like, and, yeah, performances went bad, but so it'd be great to it'd be just it would lift lift the pressure off big time if we got off to a bit of a flyer. Conversely, we've just got to make sure we don't panic. Should we not? You know, I mean, I, I don't think the you know what board, but I don't I don't think you know they should be kind of under pressure too much in that regard. But like as supporters, we should you know just just try and look at the bigger picture a bit if, if things don't go great in them first games because they're fairly tough games aren't they you know like Brighton, Brighton won't be easy Spurs Spurs away obviously won't be easy you know um, I guess Bournemouth's the one you probably look at if, if we haven't won by that one and that's that's when you start to think oh flipping heck here we go again you know so uh, yeah um, but yeah it's, I think there's a pretty pretty reasonable chance we can get into that sort of middle pack and, uh, and if we can do that we'd yeah be more than happy I think come the end of the season bear in mind as well like you know it, it, Take it, it, you know, it, if we ignore the sort of points that got taken off as last season, we we would have finished in that middle middle pack. So you know, the, 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 and given we've added to the squad, okay, we lost an honor, okay, we sold Godfrey, but you know, I think we replaced the defense well. I think in that and 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 in Jake O'Brien looks a good player, and um, we've got a good promising player in from Villa. I think we definitely still need to get a midfielder in. I think they'll, they, they, I presume they're trying to, and I guess it's the the, the dilemma up front, isn't it? But you know, I think the squad generally is looking looking a lot healthier than than than, than the squad which finished the season. So um, you'd like to think that sort of you know, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, the middling places in the middle should be pretty. You know, you'd like to think that would be pretty achievable. But a good start would just really sort of make my day in the in 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 the sun on Saturday. <laughs> so there, but yeah, so fingers crossed. Yeah, I I think you're right to highlight. The defence, because I, I think O'Brien, without that signing, and now, I mean, earlier in the summer, you would have been worried about Branthwaite not being around, obviously, for transfer reasons. Out injured, you you have the same anxiety, really, looking at the options that we had available in reserve last season. Obviously, one less now with Godfrey, but I think O'Brien coming in, that's really reassuring, and he's already looks like he's settled in really well, which is which is reassuring. Um I think, yeah, Irabuna has probably been the, the standout from pre-season in, in pretty much every game, including the uh, commentary game I mentioned, which was pretty terrible across the ball. He, he was probably the one bright spark in that game, and he looks like he's improved. Um, so that bodes well. I don't think... I, I agree. I think another more senior option in there would be great, but if it doesn't happen, then I think that, that area of the pitch looks pretty well stocked, particularly now that Decore's dropping deeper as well, and we've got far more options in that hole behind. We've got more options coming off the bench as well in attacking positions to affect the game. Um, I guess the, on- the only worrying part, I guess, is the fullback areas. And there's, there's always got to be one area of the pitch that you look at as a 
a bit of a problem point. And Seamus coming off against Roma, again, a bit worrying. Um, another Mikalenko injury would be very worrying because um, then you are starting to scratch the surface a bit and you wonder, can Sean Dyche play Ashley Young three times in the same game maybe <laughs> to try and fit him in? Um, or do we get in a situation where it's it's a whole gate at right back and Ashley Young at left back? Let's let's not... I, I said I was upbeat and now I'm worrying myself. So <laughs> let's, not, <laughs> let's not do that. But um, but yeah, overall, I think, I think the squad looks stronger, which given all the off, off the field noise, given the turmoil at times of, of last season with points deductions to to be starting this one having lost some high profile players but kept mainly the ones that we want to keep there um i think that's why there is a bit of a bit of composure going into the new season and as you say paul a, a win against brighton who are in transition themselves although a dangerous side uh with lots of good players um i think a good start there and yeah maybe that maybe that sort of calm feeling some of us are experienced at least is is justified um but we'll have to wait and see won't we yeah the the fullback situation i think i think it's a bit, bit more than a bit of a problem i think mm. it's it's potentially a massive problem I, I don't know how much money there is available in the transfer kitty i think we might be looking at loans and things but for me i think you've got to get at least one more body in there capable of playing there because he didn't he didn't play um, Roman Dixon. I didn't want to take another look at him against Roma. And you obviously don't want to be putting too much pressure on on, a, on your younger players. It's nice to have them there as a, as a sort of last resort, I suppose. But particularly with Godfrey going, I mean, Godfrey was the, was the utility man, wasn't he? You could plug him in anywhere across the back line and fill a hole. But with him gone, I mean, you could potentially have Bradthwaite as an emergency left back but he's not going to be he's not going to start the season <clears throat> we're not sure when he's actually going to be completely fit to start so it's 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 a bit of a worry you know when your your first your first choice is a 39 year old Ashley Young um you know the the error prone slightly erratic unpredictable Ashley Young yeah i just think that for me should be the priority position that we're looking at right now for me, it's, it's. I mean, I, you, I'll, I'll be shut down probably, but like the right back, I'm probably comfortable enough with, and that like between, I just feel like between the three of them of Young and Coleman and Patterson, you, <laughs> somebody should be fit. Between, the, I mean, the, well, you know, only one of them is at the moment, but like, uh, well, that's you know, that's my concern. Is <laughs> only one of them is. <laughs> well, like, my my concern's more the other side, as you say, uh, yeah. because like you don't really I, I, people say, oh, I, I, there seems to be this narrative at the moment of like, uh, oh, it's okay, Blanfoy can play that. I don't really want Blanfoy playing there. Really, no, I don't either. I mean? I yeah, don't either, yeah. Uh, I don't, you can yes, he can fill in there, but it's not really ideal, is it? You, you know, he's he's a brilliant centre back. You want him in his, but that, that, that defence of you know they they played nearly get every game together Bamfoot and Tarkovsky last season and it was a massive part and all the clean sheets to be kept it was a great partnership and you want that to, to be there for, for as much of the season as possible you don't want like oh well Mikel goes in it doesn't matter Bamfoot should get shut out to left back and you, you, you know that that, that, that that shouldn't be a, the solution at all Um, so it's left back which I really feel that we you know I think we can just about cope at right Um, I really worry about left because like you know, even even this Saturday coming if uh, Mikel as an injury suddenly, well, what do you do? Is you know, does Young have to switch over to left back and yeah, your shoehorn? I think Garner's is not fit, right? Or maybe I don't know. We don't know much about Garner. So yeah. you know what what happens then? Yeah, you know, like you know, it's, it's Holgate. It's Holgate, isn't it's, it? Yeah, I mean, and he's, 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 and he's completely out of favour. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. uh, you know, you know, he's had a poor pre-season. He's you know, he's he's I don't think he's going to be. He wasn't involved on Saturday, so you know, you think if he was any sort of want to keep him involved, he'd, he'd put him in there. Or is it a case of Mac McNeil is you know having to drop back to left back or Havison or something yeah. something silly like that you know what I mean and, and, and that that's the reality of it isn't it you know so um, yeah it's um, it, it is a bit concerning I think um, you know what you'd give for like a Phil Neville or something like that I never thought I'd say them words but you know I mean somebody can <laughs> you know you can uh, you know can cover both sides very very adeptly can play midfield you know that, that that I think that that's the sort of utility play we really need right now I think who can do a lot and shows good leadership obviously they're not easy to come by but that's that that's something we kind of need right now it was, it'll put out um, you know it would, it would solve a lot of problems but yeah I, I do worry because 
I think every season now, Mikalenko has had a, some some sort of injury at some point, which has kept him out for a couple of months, probably overall. You know, and he battles through, he's gritty, but, you know, so the, if you're looking at sort of just stats and, you know, time so far, the likelihood is that Mikalenko will get an injury, and the likelihood is that Coleman and Young and Patterson will. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's um, yeah, left back more than right, I think we can just about muddle through it right, but left, I do worry about that. I don't like Van Fleet being the solution there or left back. Um, or McNeil, for that matter. You know, just a, an actual someone who can actually play left back. Is, 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 I think, and, and I think Mikalenko could do with the competition as well. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm yeah. not, not yeah. You know, I like I like Vitaly. He's he's a good competitor, but yeah, you know, but it, as everybody knows, it's it, it, it's strength as defence, and you know, it, it, it not not attack. You know, what I mean, somebody can you know take him on, you know, sort of challenge him a little bit more. You know, what I mean, so um, it could be an, it's probably quite an important position to fill really. So um, yeah, but. If we're so limited in transfer funds, I mean, it's it's, it's going to be really really tough. If we're, yeah, are we still waiting to see if we can get um, a midfielder from City? What's his name? Philip Phillips. Uh, yeah, on Phillips, loan. Yeah. That, that that's going a little quiet. I think that's a big position to fill too. Um, unless uh, I still can't pronounce his name, Irugbenum uh, can 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 fill in. You know, can really progress there. So th- there are problems. Uh, but you say all that, and yet. Despite all that, the, the squad is stronger than last season, and I, I do I do really believe that. And what I would also say is I don't feel too many other clubs are where they would like to be either in terms of the players they've signed and where they are in terms of you know um, who they, who they you know the, I think nearly all clubs haven't you know there's still a lot of business to be done. I think it might, I feel like it might actually for once be quite a lively deadline day this year, because, probably because of the Euros and everything's a bit backlogged. So yeah, there's plenty to happen yet. I think in the transfer window. Hopefully for us, but yeah, you just want you, you, you kind of what we can, yeah. About don't know, will there be a big sale? Will they have to, you know, there's the Dominic Carvalho Lewin situation that could that could cause a big issue for us, you know. What I mean, if like uh, if he has to get sold, you know, because he won't he won't sign, and then we've got to try and get another strike, you know, what I mean, it, 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 there could still be issues for us yet, so uh, he's got to really hope they can manage it as well as they can. Oh, that, that that calm feeling is just. I know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been better, isn't it? Who's the... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking about Ashley Young and far too much. But, um, yeah, I mean the the striker issue is obviously a, an ongoing uncertainty, but it it would probably feel like less of a problem if Chimiti hadn't picked up that injury. I'd, I'd have felt some some yeah. kind of sense of calm. Oh, maybe we've got a not quite ready made replacement, but someone who could grow into the role and Beto. And Mopay, I guess um, there are there are options there, um, but I think the fullback options, certainly the Coventry game, watching Coleman and Young in the same starting eleven. I mean, yeah, very early on in pre-season, but anyone with pace, which Brighton certainly have, by the way, um, signed uh, the lad from Newcastle, didn't they? Who we were strongly linked with, who's got bags of it. Um, I think we, we're going to struggle. In, going against sides with with those our, our, our first two fullbacks, so obviously keeping Mikel, Mikelenko fits vital. Um, I don't know what Ruben Vinagre is up to. I've just I've just googled him. <laughs> uh, Warsaw, L- 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 Liga Warsaw. Um, so yeah, that that, that ship Fine. sailed. Uh, sadly, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think you, you're right. Some some competition on that side, or if if funds are tight, some kind of utility player who could cover both flanks, who's maybe a bit more mobile. Um, I, I do like what I've seen of Roman Dixon, by the way, going back to him earlier. But he's obviously he's very young, he's very raw. Um, but the fact that he has had some minutes in preseason and, and been featured on the bench, yes, it's probably a sign of the lack of options out there. But mm. it's it's a degree of trust, isn't it? So we we might see a little bit more of him. Um, I do think that dropping someone like a McNeil or a Garner in there and maybe going to three centre backs might be the more pragmatic option if if injuries do bite, but you would imagine that for Brighton, all being well, you would have Young at right back, Mikalenko at left back, and that would be that. And it would be a very similar looking side, I'd imagine, to what we saw against Roma, which I think is a good side. I think there's there's some balance there, but what I want to hear a bit more about, because certainly I was a bit disappointed going to the Coventry game. I was thinking, oh, great, get to see our new great Dane, and he didn't appear, uh, but... Mm-hmm. You got to see him, Paul, and also um, Ilman and Dai, who, again, only featured for 45 minutes against Coventry, but they looked really bright from what I saw. What what did you make of them up close? 
Yeah, checks notes. Um, we've got uh, <laughs> <laughs> Danish. I'll go, <laughs> yeah, I'll go through them all, shall I? Um, Tim of Ugabunum. Well, I mean, given he's a player who I don't think really we were probably expecting to see play an awful lot this season, certainly at, at the start of the season. From what I see from him on on Saturday, particularly with uh, James Garner potentially out, and obviously you know that obviously no no no, no real replacement for an honor. And even players like Gomez and all them players gone. I guess the quality might drop back there, but I I could see him. I think he's got a, he's in a real, real a real shot of starting on Saturday. I would say. I think he looks. Um, you know, again, try not to get too carried away <clears throat> in pre season. We go first impression. I thought he looks really really good, really positive player, and he can, he can carry the ball well. You know, he's um, for the young lad. He's not intimidated. He's um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be quite comfortable with him starting on Saturday, I think, from what I've seen of him. Um, so, good on him. It, you know, it can't have been easy for him to come in and sort of, you know, you know, into a new club and young lad trying to hit the ground running like that. And I hope he gets a chance on Saturday, uh, particularly if the, you know, the injuries are there and the injuries are still there for, for the others, because I think that's um, he could have an opportunity there. He looks a good player. Hope to see plenty of him throughout the season. He, he looks really good. Uh, Jake O'Brien... Looks fairly composed. Looks like one of that. You know, some players just just arrive and it's like they've been there for years. He looks a bit like that, really. So I think he's, you know, again, it's um, hopefully it's it, you know, if there's an injury to talk, obviously if there's an injury to Bamford, if they're not available, you got that player who can just seamlessly slot in. I think that might be, you know, the player, you know, that, and, and that's good because obviously rightly or wrongly, there's, you know, there's often the concerns about Michael Keane, Ben Godfrey, Mason Holgate, you know. So hopefully that's a, a step forward in that position there. So I think it's a good young player we got. Lindstrom, I love to reserve judgment. I thought he looked he looked busy and he looked looked hard working, but I just, I just didn't see. I just don't think I've seen enough of him there to know to know what he, what what he'd be like really. But hopefully quite good. Um, the big one is uh, Ilman and Dai, because uh, obviously it was uh, it was great seeing him come on and you know that that little pillow as he did and sort of that shot and uh, getting involved up the pitch quite early. But I don't think Sean Dyche will like a lot of the stuff that he saw there from like his uh, you know he try, he's trying to do them trying to do them things and you know outside his own penalty area and you know it, there was one point he got caught out and I just don't think it's something that Sean Dyche would have liked seeing that far too risky for Sean I think that so I'd, I'd, I'd be um, I'd be surprised if he starts with him just on that basis. Where really. he's uh, being a bit more of a safe, safe man. And it, just to be honest, a few, a few of them things I didn't like the look of towards it, particularly in their own half. But you know, you want players to get off, you know, to get you off your seat, so to speak, don't you? And um, you know, in the, in the other half of the pitch, I could see him being a very big impact sub, certainly to start the season. I don't know um, how long that takes for Sean to sort of trust them. I think he'll start with the Corley. I think. And also, I don't know if he should. I don't think the quality was great, really. The other day, hasn't he's missed a lot of the missed a lot of the, the preseason, hasn't he? With, with all these the games of injuries, so um, I'd like to see him on Andai play more. But I could see why perhaps Sean might just start him off the bench to begin with. And and that's the problem. With, I guess if you're going to criticise Sean, it's you know if the game's nil nil, you're probably not likely to see him come on. Yeah, you know I mean. If suddenly we go one down in the 78 minutes, like right, quick, you come on, get on there. You got to, you know, what I mean, and put like it might be yeah. similar for Lindstrom, yeah. you know. What I mean, so that's perhaps a little bit of a concern. And I just want to make a little bit of a mention, but about that young uh, Harrison Armstrong who came on. I, I know he's a young player, yeah. don't carry the way. He looks like he's got a lot of ability. Him, I don't know how much he'd be involved, but um, he's just signed a, a three-year contract in the summer. So hopefully they they see they see something. In him. He looks like he's got some ability. So um, hopefully we get to see a bit a bit more of him. Perhaps if we get a you know handy League Cup draw or something like that, and maybe get a chance to see him a bit more this season because I, I'm not too sure if he's. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He did a few good things defensively. I don't know if he's more centre, defensive mid or centre mid or defender. I don't really know. But like, he looks, he looks a good player. Him, so maybe the answer to some some problems a bit further down the track. But obviously, a young player we'll have to see. But yeah, he I thought he looked pretty good. So yeah, so that's my assessment of of the of the uh, of the of the uh, players. So I don't expect basically in a nutshell. I don't expect too many of them to start. Maybe maybe just Tim. I think would be the only one. Maybe well, obviously maybe Jake, maybe Jake if. Uh, if um, uh, Van Fleet's not available, which I don't think he is. So, yeah, they'd be probably the only two starters, I think. It kind of sticks to the Deitch methodology of stick with what you know until there's mm. no other option, really. Yeah. Whether it's enforced or whether it's clamour from all angles, which is what we saw, <laughs> I guess, with Michael Keane being replaced by Branthwaite. Um, 
the the links from one that, that that worried me slightly then when I, I started to remember obviously about Danjima last season and yeah there is that worry that some of these more shall we say luxury players do maybe get a bit overlooked and some sometimes rightly I guess in in some games but um, I, as I say at the commentary game watching in day come off at half time was quite surprising I've got to say he wasn't great no, nor was anyone but. I, I thought, oh, he, he must be injured. But then maybe there is that sense of he's not... He, I, w- I wouldn't say he's a typical Dutch player, but then he also looks like he works really hard. And based on the, the scant highlights that I saw, which um, luckily I was busy, otherwise I would have missed half a game anyway trying to watch it online with the uh, Everton site. But, <laughs> but uh, just, yeah, always looks like it's just someone holding up their uh, their old Nokia trying to film it. But... um, um but he obviously that, that that moment that that as you say that little pirouette and 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 shot that snapshot from from distance that was looked by far and away the most exciting moment of the game. So a player like that that's that's something we really haven't had for some time. So I'd, I'd be excited to see more of him. But I think you are probably right. I think that starting eleven um, seems pretty obvious to say. But that starting eleven, most players who he knows exactly what they do when they do it, is probably the one we're going to see. Yeah, I think you're right. It's very, he's very sort of, sort of by the book, Deitch, isn't he? Very uh, predict- predictable in that sense. I, th- I think we, I don't think we'll see either Injai or Lindstrom in the, in the starting eleven, and I think as you say, the the others wouldn't be there either if it weren't for injuries. Um, but no. I think it, it's the, the unfortunate thing, and I think we over the course of the season, I'm hoping that each one will, you know, impress enough uh, that they will force their way in and, and will become fixtures in the side because I think they offer they make us a much more rounded side much more rounded team particularly within Jai there because he gives you something that we just haven't had before that guile up there and, and the, way, the way that we play I think Lindstrom could be really important with the, with the pace because we just had so mm. little pace in that side um, so it's, it's, it's potentially um, something that we can we can actually leverage, particularly obviously when we're we're under the caution. We can, we know that 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 Dyke like, likes to play on the on the counter, particularly away from home when possible. So maybe that's where he'll get the uh, get the chance to shine. I'd I'd just like to see us get a bit more like horses for courses, you know, like so like at the yeah you know, yeah okay if we go against Brighton with, with, with what he knows a bit more, I think like well Lindstrom hasn't been you know he hasn't had as, as long in the pre-seasons as everybody else, fair enough. Yeah, you know I mean the you know and I. Uh, yeah, to be honest, even though, like, like I say, I, some of the things I saw, I'd be like, mm, I don't know, I'm not sure what I'm doing that around the edge of our box when we're playing Brighton, you know, like things, things like that, you know. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be too disappointed if like yeah, he, he sticks what he knows a bit against Brighton. But I don't know, like you know, a few games time. If, I don't know, like when we've got Bournemouth for home. But I'd like to admit, you know, wouldn't it be good to keep the the opposition guessing a little bit of you know, like, you know, yes. just like oh, yeah. do you go, oh, 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 blimey, he stuck this, you know, guy, you know, you, you know that Andai is a skillful lad. You know, straight away you're probably planning to play the call, eh? But yeah, if you're the opposition, it'd be nice to just keep the opposition on their toes a bit more. And now we feel like we've got the potentially got the quality to do that. You know, what I mean, in, in in attacking areas, or the, certainly like the difference makers to do that in attacking areas, I like to see that. And you know, I, I'm loath to criticise Dice because I, I, you know, I think he's done a great job for Everton. and I think he's uh, he saved us in a lot of ways, and he's you know, he carried us so well last season. You know, what I mean, and you know, you you got to tr- trust his judgment, but yeah, you kind of get that nagging doubt, don't you? That you kind of feel like, well, is he going to change it? Is he going to stick to what he knows? And the answer is most likely yes, he will stick to what he knows. You know, so and and, and that's probably. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe last season it probably wouldn't have been a fair criticism. But if this goes on this season, we, I don't know. Say we're not doing too well. We're 15 games in. It's the same. You know, the, the same sort of personnel. Yeah. It would become a fair criticism. So uh, yeah, it's an int- it'd be interesting to see how we how we uh, how that all goes this season. But I definitely want to see these players. You know, well, I think given how much he he relied on the stats last season, you know, his, mm. his, his fixation on XG, he would point to this stat that the people have been talking about on, on Twitter the last week about the fact we've only what, won three games without Decore. You know, the number of games we win with him in the side is much higher. And I should probably automatically point at that and saying, that's my starting point. And it's up to Njai to come in. And the interesting thing actually for me was that when he came on, Jack Harrison was the one who was moved centrally, not in Jai. So he, he wasn't put into that number 10 spot that I think we assumed he would um, behind the striker. So 
that was an interesting one for me. And um, apparently, I mean, Lindstrom is it can can play that role too behind the striker as well. Uh, so it's going to be. Interesting. I just thought it was a kind of a missed opportunity, given that Harrison, in his days at Leeds, all his best work was done as a left winger, and here was a chance to put him in his favourite position. Which I think, if you sat down with him and asked him, you know, that last season, do you think that you were hampered somewhat by the fact that you were con- played almost exclusively on the right? He'd probably say yes because I'm a left winger by trade. That's where I play, and Deitch doesn't play him there. So I thought that was interesting and somewhat disappointing actually, because I'd like to have seen him given a go out there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these players, I, I guess the good thing compared to last season is that, yeah, Harrison was flexible, but because of a lack of options on the right, couldn't be flexible. He had to always play in that position. And then we'd start clutching at straws, saying, oh, maybe we can move McNeil through the middle. He'd probably be better there. And he, he might have been, but it's it's mm. it's it's not a position that he's played in with any real consistency. Whereas now, with these other options, like you say, playing in day out, out, out wide, uh, Lindstrom, who... By all accounts, he's probably more of a central attacking midfielder than a, than a winger, but has all the attributes you'd want from a, a winger. Certainly, like you say, Lyndon, the, the pace side, which is desperately lacking in other areas of the squad. Um, when, when you put all those players together and someone like Decore, who can play further forward or deeper as needs be, um, it's it, it does give a lot more options. So a manager who likes to experiment would probably have a field day. A manager who likes systems and patterns and likes sticking to what he knows would the probably tried and true yeah, yeah we'll probably yeah. we'll probably do just that um and yeah i i guess there are spring things of of change in there but it again it's it's usually down to well that's that's because of injuries um but it, but it will be interesting when the fi- when the fixtures start to come thick and fast as you mentioned paul as well things like the league cup start to come into it obviously we had Beto's infamous cameo against Doncaster <laughs> last year, but then you look at that game. Uh, that Dan Gima scored, didn't they? And again, it was a it was a, a false dawn. So um, I think maybe we'll see a bit more experimentation on the back of that. I'm not sure. Um, and again, Calvert Lewin. That's that's another question mark. That would that would also change the way we play. How those attacking players um, line up, you know, would. Would Ndai walk into the into the side as a sort of false nine? Um, would it be better? I don't know. Lots lots of questions. Um, but nice to have those options in that part of the pitch. But we've also reversed a little bit, and now you look at those fullback positions and go, oh, we could do with a few more options there. Um, and again, in midfield as well with, with James Garner. Yeah, I, I, I completely forgot was out of the squad, and that's that's another question mark, isn't it? So. The bench is quite thin, um, despite all, all all that I've just said in an attacking sense. If we chase him again, great. Um, if we want to hold on, then we might be playing Billy Krellin at centre back or something. Um, so, <laughs> perish the thought. <laughs> or fullback. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, more likely actually. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. I, I I just just to go back to Irabunum. I, I think that he has been the standout mm. of the of the preseason and does a lot of the things going forward that I that I think a lot of us hoped Onana would do. Um, I think there were some question marks over him defensively, particularly in that Coventry game. But regardless of that, he was still, for me, the most impressive player out there. Um, he just, he's got, I don't know, he's just got a, he's, what is he, only 21? He's got quite a bit of swagger about him, some self-confidence, which I really, really like. It'd be nice if we could just shift Mope for, you know, say, Eight ten million just to give us a little bit of um, you know, spending power to go and do something either up front or in the rest of the squad. But the the issue of Calvert Calvert Lewin, I know we've talked about him quite a lot. Excuse me, I'm <laughs> emotional about the thought of him down his contract. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's driving me crazy. The closer we get to not only the season starting but the the transfer deadline the less sense it makes to obviously to sell Calvert Lewin because you've got so little time to replace him. And of course, and it's funny, I've just I just did a one on one with um Jim Kyogen and we, we discussed this where Everton's legendary ill ability to, to sign decent strikers. If you're condensing that and, and I'm sure that um you know that Kevin Thelwell has a shopping list, but if you're coming down to the final days, even the final hours of the window, my confidence in Everton being able to sign a a player who not not necessarily can score goals because Calvert Lewin, obviously, the last couple of seasons hasn't scored that many goals, but he's been very important to the way we play. That 
would be my concern. And yes, it would be nice to get 20, 25 million through the door before the window closes, but not at the expense of having, you know, a, a recovering Chimiti and, uh, and a big question mark in Beto as our um, main attacking options. And I mean, if, if Mope sticks around again, he's not going to, he's not going to score that many goals. I just, we just like Brentford to come in the next week or so and just take him off our hands. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Well, the frustrating thing with Neil Mope is I don't know how, how much more he could have done to, to get to secure his move. He, he, he actually yeah. did really well at Brentford. So it's like, it's a, it's a bit frustrating that Brentford didn't just just take it, take a you know just just decide to sign them permanently, or another club hasn't gone. Oh, we did all right there. I'll you know I'll take a look, look at him, be that in the Premier League or elsewhere. So um, they still might, they yeah, still might, yeah. but there's no there's no urgency on their on their part. If you look mm-hmm. at their situation, we may as well just go to the deadline because Everton don't want him. <laughs> but where what's the point in us spending more now when we could possibly go in and just give them less just before the deadline? You know. It's a good point if you just say to everyone yeah. deadline lay off the email here you go <laughs> so whatever the exactly. what, what are we gonna yeah. do is it last year was contract yeah. as well is it i don't know maybe uh, it's, it's his last I'm year sure, yeah. 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 yeah yeah oh, we haven't oh got, well there you go oh but yeah we're like <laughs> not have much of a bargaining <laughs> yeah position. we don't hold the aces there do we jesus that's, we that's gonna be a <laughs> well i don't know how we're gonna get uh, yeah i mean that's it there might even be a case he gets loaned out somewhere yeah. and he covers wages for the season that's, that's and a bad yeah. more likely <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, I'll be like that. Yeah, well, that's that, that's frustrating, isn't it? Um, yeah, it it it, because it feels like inevitable he'll be he'll be moved on, or like you know, surely he wants to leave, surely Everton wanting to to move. But yeah, again, might might if we if we can't really get him get rid, it might just be alone, and then he's gone. Um, yeah, this it is a strange one, Dominic. That if he weren't in in real financial trouble, well, it, it's a real tough one, isn't it? I think if Everton given it, someone offers Everton twenty million quid or so in the end, they'll take it because I think they'll have to, you know, like fight like financially. Even yeah. though that more, you know, even though keeping that striker could be it was worth that, it, it, it could be worth a lot more to us by having that striker available uh, in in the course of the Premier League. I don't, yeah, you know, but they might just have to take the money from like a you know a financial point of view and a profit point of view and all them things, which is which it's really frustrating. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying really not to think an awful lot about strikers. Like in the here and now, it's 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 okay. If we get to deadline, still with Dominic Carvalho Lewin there, then I think we're okay. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. Chimiti to come back and Beto there. I'm just not trying to try and try not to think about it too much. Really, I'm, just, I'm I'm thinking more about okay, what do we need to do? And that and, and certainly, I think we like we said we need to plug left back. I think and we said we, we need a bit more in in centre mid. If suddenly you know. But if this if he's going to go, you, you know you want it to be done sooner rather than later, <clears throat> because so that we've got a little bit of time to try and engineer something. Um, you know, otherwise we've we ended up with, with like Veg horse, aren't we? Veg horse or something like that, aren't we? You know, so um, it's uh, yeah, it is a dilemma which I'm, <laughs> I'm just running away from <laughs> in some reality bites of that one. I'm afraid. That's exactly who we'd sign as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, 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 Shea Adams uh, is out of, out of a picture. Um, I did notice today that um, they released a a little soundbite interview from Dom uh, about mm. looking forward to playing at a rock in Goodison. So, you know, if if that's a way to sort of redress some of the a little bit of a negativity that crept in certainly early in preseason, it was definitely on show in the commentary game where his attitude looked a little bit sulky um, and there was that worry that as the summer went on, as the story swirl around and nothing really changes, is he going to become a bit of a lightning rod for any dissatisfaction? But um, I think the fact that he scored a, a really well taken goal um, and looks fit, if uh, as, as you say, Lynn, I think the thought of trying to replace him very last minute, not good. Um but I also agree, Paul. I think if, if if that money's offered at some point, then we are going to have to have a plan B because if there's one thing we really need, probably annoyingly more than fullbacks or pace or guile and creativity and all the, all the things we want to see as fans, is money really. And and he's as as good an avenue to that. And and it's money with a time limit as well, isn't it? So um, we'll have to see how that one plays out. But I I personally I, I think at this stage I hope he stays. Um, and I think um, with those players around him, hopefully he'll have a more productive season. And, and that, even though it might not be the complete win-win for us, um, if he does say play so well that he earns a very 
nice little Bosman move um, next season, at least you can assume he's fired us to the new stadium and everyone's fairly happy with the result. Whereas letting him go and, as you say, trolling around, trying to find someone to fill his shoes for less money, it, it's going to end up with either a bad loan or a yeah, someone like a veg horse, really. Um, some some dead horse to flog veg horse, dead horse, I don't know. I'm, I'm, t- I'm tired. <laughs> I, I got, I got Best I could do. Almost worked. Yeah, no, almost. Yeah, yeah. I, I might have COVID. I might have quit off the uh, course. <laughs> <laughs> the the Kiefer Moore is a surplus to requirements of Bournemouth, and that's like, yeah, oh, the, that's the pool. That's the pool we'd be fishing that's, in, presumably. Yeah, you know I mean, that's, uh, yeah. that's uh, terrifying. <laughs> but then uh, I don't know. I suppose it could be a situation where like clubs might be thinking, "Oh, let's see how he gets on until January," and then like uh, you know, and then if if, if he's yeah. like doing well, January, then yeah. Flow, flow. What could we do? It, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't knock back ten million quid down or whatever it is, could we? Yeah, I mean, if, he, yeah. if, he, if he's like, if he's in good form, the positive thing at the moment is he's got two and two, he, and he's always one of them players. He's he, he's often scored in purple patches, so hopefully that bodes well for the first couple of games. Um, you know, but, you know, he, he's buzzing. I'd, I'd back him to get, a, you know, put a chance away against Brighton. So hopefully, you know, we can just start the season well with him, and you know, whatever goes from there, then so be it. But let's hope he can. Um, He's in that purple patch for, for at least for this window for us, and then whatever happens from there, so be it. But let's uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's hope he can hit the hit the ground running this season. And if that means it more, it's more money, and he's sell, end up selling him for that, then then okay. But you know, at least he's contributed, and I guess that's all we can hope for at the moment. Is is that a prediction for a win on Saturday then, Paul? <laughs> I don't feel like Brighton are in great the greatest shape. I don't think. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't followed them closely enough. I mean, it's it, there's obviously change. You know, managerial change, and you, it's always a bit of a journey into the unknown. And they didn't do great last season, Brighton. Yeah, you know, they were on, a, on on quite a downward slope. They, you know, they. Yeah. they I, I don't know a lot about the players they signed. Who's the um? They've lost that. Who's the German player? They they they, they let go. He's, he's, Pascal Gross. Yeah. He's a good player. I, I was not. I was not sad to see him go. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. As an Evertonian. Yeah. yeah, he's a good player. He's he's a little older, isn't he? He's like 33, 34 or something like yeah. that. But he's he's a good player. I think that'd be a bit mm-hmm. of a, a bit of a loss for them. I don't know what the plans are on replacing them. I don't know enough about their manager. But yeah, I'd, I'd fancy us at home. I don't. Yeah, I think there's. Not a lot of fear. Don't get me wrong; it'd be difficult. But um, yeah. I think Sean Dyche has done quite well against Brighton in the games he's played against them. Now I, d- I don't see a new that they, they've got a bit of a philosophy and a bit of a style, Brighton. So I'm guessing that the manager they got in now is of that similar ilk. So you don't see, you know, I think he seems to have a pretty good, yeah, pretty a pretty good idea of what he's up against Brighton, and he's a bit unlucky not to. Well, for both games wasn't it really that to, to not, you know, to not come away with at least one win from them two games really last season. Um, so yeah, I, I think we've got a reasonable chance against Brighton. Yeah, that, that, yeah, there's always the famous fight. Just just stick the highlight to the, the five-one <laughs> <laughs> in the dressing room yeah. before the game, and that'll yeah. uh, that'll get the white going, won't it? So yeah, yeah, fancy us to win that one. Yeah, get the season start the season well. I just saw they, they they beat Villarreal four nil in my last pre season friendly, which um yeah. It's slightly worrying. Um and they have they have got the aforementioned uh Jan Kuba Minto, who we're obviously mm. heavily linked with as part of that 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 potential transfer for Dom. Um that's got a bit of narrative written all over it, sadly. Um and he looks a really, yeah. really, really good player. Um as I mentioned, yeah, they they they've got a good side, but I think you're right, Paul. There's there's, there's a lot of unknowns there, certainly with the new coach coming in, um, and yeah, you're right. Our, our recent record under Deitch, I guess, um, before that there was there was a few more horror <laughs> shows. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, shudder at the thought. But I would I would fancy us with um, not to rub it in that you're not going to be there again, Paul. But what what I'd imagine will be a really great atmosphere. Um, on Saturday, I I fancy us to to get a point at least. Um, I, I would I would say a point would be a good result. A win would obviously be a lot better. Um, but I think I, I I think a point against that Brighton side, nothing nothing bad about that. And and I, I think if you look at our run of games, yeah, we, we've we've got a few tough months. I think is, is it sort of November to December is raw for members. Another spell around Easter that looks. That looks tricky as well, but 
this this opening to the season after that Spurs game isn't isn't too shabby. So if we can if we can pick up a bit of momentum and obviously usher in some of the players who've been on the sidelines as well, then um, I don't think a point's a bad result. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll squeeze up to a win. Squeeze up to a win. Two one Everton. There you go. Very nice. <laughs> I mean, there's an argument for saying we should have won both games against them last season. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so and as you say, you know, Deitch has done well against them. So uh, yeah, it's if you just see it, it feels weird. It doesn't it doesn't feel like the season's about to start? I don't know why. I think maybe because there's been so much going on this summer in terms of the Euros and the Olympics and everything to kind of keep your mind off it. That it's just come around quite quickly, which is nice, really. Yeah, it has. Yeah, um, I've remembered as well. Like I don't know if it's the last the time I missed the home, the, the first home game of the season, but certainly it is a time I missed the first home game of the season. It was uh, 2009, 2010 opener. We got hammered six one by Arsenal. So I really hope that's not. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be cancelling your holiday. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not coming back. Um... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a bit of a back, uh, 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 completely um, irrelevant backstory to that as well, because that was because my mate, um, my mate was getting married in um, in uh, I think it was in Nottingham actually uh, for that one, and um, we, we got through all the it was it was a late kickoff game. We got through all the speech. I, I was one of the ushers, and we got through one of the speeches and all that, and all that happened. And yeah, you had a little bit of time after the wedding when the, the speech is done. You've had your mail, and I was like, "What's that? Oh, we could, we could go and catch a second half here for you." So if you was like, didn't know the score, screw it down the pub, and someone someone says, "Everton are losing three 0 We're like, "Oh yeah, piss off, you idiot!" <laughs> and got there, and sure enough, you we were losing three 0 But yeah. <laughs> obviously, it got a lot worse than that. But um, he just got married again. Like, yeah, but he got he got divorced since then. Now he's, <laughs> now he's married again. He's just he's just been in Vegas for this one. So uh, yeah, I didn't make it for that. <laughs> so that. So hopefully it's. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll uh, I guess I'll be able to catch the case. Yeah. yeah, hopefully, yeah, I'll be able to catch the full game, and uh, yeah, I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not just be leaving after an hour or so in disappointment and going back to the pool or something. So, yeah, <laughs> so that's the last one I remember missing anyway. Six one against Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a pretty miserable way to start a season. Let's hope. Uh... Let's hope we're not in that situation on Saturday, but I'm sure we won't. I think things are looking up, and uh, it'll be uh, solid, perhaps not spectacular, but hopefully we can grind out a win. Um, whatever happens, we'll be back next week. Hopefully we can welcome back um, our roving deep reporter, Andy Howard, back to the, back to the contingent. And, uh, yeah, if you're going on Saturday Blues, of course, make sure you uh, raise a roof for the new season, our final season at Goodison Park. It's going to be It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting with the narratives over this season. But uh, yeah, we'll be back to, to discuss it all next week. Thanks for listening, Blues. As always, take care and up the toppies. Some nights are made to dream.